Ow. 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 Welcome back to Suladan Plays Star Wars The Old Republic. Last time we took down a shield. This time I drove back a path of Sith Apprentice apparently and he's really bad at his job. They told me to drive into the city through the main gate and that's what we're doing and thankfully nobody stopped us yet. Aww. Well now I'm just disappointed. But my mission remains. I will go to the main gate of the city. There was a split what second that I was out of combat, and I'm very confused by it. Uh, Kira, I need you to not be knocked out. Because that doesn't bode well for me, because everybody that you had aggroed is now following me. Thankfully, we're not inside of an instance, so they do have a leash limit. Inside of an instance, they would all be following me. Well, I found the gate of the city. Uh, this is a spaceport. <gasps> Blow it up. Boom. It's a smoke screen. Y'all can't find me. I am invisible. I am invisible. I can't believe how far I've gotten. I wasn't in combat, and I really could have taken advantage of that right there. I'm going to die right here. I made it to my quest marker. I will call that a victory. <sighs> Alas, the victory has cost me 20-something seconds, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Eight, seven, yeah, we know how this works. Can I go home now? Kira, where are you? Hi, Kira. Yeah, safety is right there. I don't even need the 12 seconds. Look. Oh, I thought there was an elevator. I was going to sit here and ride the elevator. I may as well heal up first. Hangar 61. What's in Hangar 61? I don't know. Hangar 61 stuff. Statues. Apparently this is where they keep the statues. And the dead bodies. Fair enough. Yo. Your ship is on fire. Uh, but You've lost, Beck. Your men are dead and your ship's in flames. What? How did you do this to us? Here come your reinforcements. Ask them if you don't believe me. Uh, I see a traitor. Explain yourself. What's this all about? We've been betrayed. Colonel Marek's joined the Empire. Please, don't make this hard. Surrender or die. Those are your options. What was your loyalty worth? What do you get for your part in this? When the Empire came, the Republic fought, lost, and left. Belmora needs order, stability, and power to survive. Our future is with the Empire. Don't do this. You can't truly believe that. Help me defeat the Imperials. The Republic didn't learn anything from being outmatched. You're no different. Hear that, Beck? Your backups refuse to surrender. Don't make the same mistake. Well, go get him, Kara. No, oh, you die now. I can think at some point they would just be, hmm, that guy's got a lightsaber. Maybe I don't want to shoot at him. HK-47 would be very disappointed in you idiots. Lesson number one, don't shoot at the Jedi. At least not with a plasma blaster. You learn your lesson yet, bud? You're just gonna let him limp along after me. Hello? Please tell me someone won that firefight! Only the colonel's left. So what do you see happening next? 
Colonel Merrick was respected and revered all over Balmora. If word of this gets out, we'll lose face. And that means losing support and manpower. You coward. Weak and spineless, just like the Republic. The Colonel was once a hero. Let him die like one. Kill him, and put him in with the others. I'll say he fell in combat. I'd rather not lie. Let's, uh, let's... Killing go. the Colonel won't bring your men back. He lives. I thank you for that. Maybe you can pass some of that spine over to Balmora. Despite the Colonel's best efforts, you've won us the spaceport. Sobrick will be a battlefield for a few days, but we'll get it under control. Meet me back at the Troida workshop. I'll be waiting. Hmm. Interesting. I don't know what's happening. Kira. Kira, what's happening? Why is there loot over here? Can I... Okay, the game is smart enough to do that. Two things you can be pretty sure a gamer will do. One, if there's a dog, they are going to try to pet it. Hence the whole, you know, can you pet the dog thing. Two, if there's fire or a flaming object or a torch or a campfire, they are going to jump in it and see if the game has coded to account for their stupidity. It just seems to be a natural instinct. Can't mount here. Fine. Do what you must. If I make it out of here, I make it out of here. And if I don't, I get to go to the med place, which is out of here. So I get my way either way. If I remember where the exit's at. Gonna drive right back out of the city like we did to get in here. I like how there's just one random shop over here. Republic medical droid just hanging out over there. Nobody noticed. I'm so thankful that these people don't have like crowd control or abilities that knock me off my bike because this is every time I start getting comfortable. I'm gonna say it's so nice and relaxing to get to just finally fly through an area. Hang on, what was that? Clean sweep? Okay, Kira, you've discovered something. Let's get him, Kira. You'll be fine, Kira. Oh, there's a Sith Apprentice over here. Uh, how did I die? How? Everyone is dead. Kira, how did you fail us this badly? I understand why games do this, but at the same time, I think that just wasting the player's time and making them sit at the screen is also pointless. Optimally, you could just, you know, take the option away and have Return to Med Center be the only option, but then that wouldn't be fun because you're wasting the player's time by making them run back here. So, uh, I don't know. It's especially difficult to balance in an MMO environment because you can't have, say, throw a game over screen and load previous save because that's not how the MMO works, or at least not the classic style of MMO. If it was completely instantiated, then yeah, you could have say, something like the original Guild Wars where the entire mission was an instance where you could have death send them all the way back to the start of the instance. It doesn't do that in Guild Wars. I'm just trying to think of a way that you could have a quote-unquote save point within a mission, and it would generally be through that instance-based concept. You had respawn points or respawn pads or places where you would respawn in Guild Wars, but each time you died, you would have... Uh, Let's see, is it 5 or 15%? I think it's 15% debt, quote-unquote debt. Your health and mana would be reduced by 15% each time you died, up to a maximum of 60% reduction. And then you fighting and killing stuff and gaining experience 
would, you know, knock it off 1% at a time. Basically preventing you from brute forcing your way through a level because you would inevitably be like 60% weaker. And because enemies were leashed together in groups, like if they were all, they would always spawn in like groups. You'd have like four or six of them and aggroing one of them would aggro all of them. Which is in of itself an annoying concept to me. The reason they did it is because the game was built under the assumption of you playing in teams. However, they got around doing it by allowing you to have AI team members. They weren't the smartest, and I still think it's a shame that you didn't have some basic system to give them orders, even if it's wait here, fight that thing, etc. They were purely, they just follow you. Like, even this right here is more advanced than what you had there. But they still did their job well, as long as you weren't trying to do, like, in-game raid dungeon content things. Raids weren't so much a thing back then, it was just, they called them, you know, dungeons. In which case you had to play smart, because the maximum player level was 20 and the maximum en enemy level was 30. So, uh... Anyway, that all to say that, you know, that's about the only way I can think of them doing some kind of save point within an MMO. Within this style of MMO. I mean, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. 14, 15, person in room. You and your lightning stuff. I'll leave you alone this time. Uh, we're gonna fight y'all. There's a group of you here. I still think that game, like, did a really good job. Guild Wars 1 was just in unique. We'll say unique. And it was a hard act to follow. Guild Wars 2 completely changed up the formula, and it works, but to me it felt far less story-based and more like standard World of Warcraft MMO. It had interesting character design, a very good character creator, interesting character classes, but it completely dropped the instance-based quest system, the fact that the game played more like a story, and in, a, in the original Guild Wars, like I said, your max player character was 20, so you pretty much, you played through the story, you hit max level partway through the story. Uh, but it also had its shortcomings in that, like, I like random loot. I like the ability to find items and equipment and be like, hey, this one's better than that one, or this one's a rare or legendary or whatever. Guild Wars didn't so much have that. It was like, here's the level 10 armor set for your class. Here's the level 15 armor set for your class, etc. You could add, like, I think the... There was a couple things you could add or tweak, but for the most part, it was just very simplistic. But one could also argue psychologically against the notion of a game relying too much on loot, uh, you know, a la Diablo and Borderlands, because you can also, you know, make the game so much about that that it's not about stats anymore. Uh, not to veer too far off course, that was one problem. The one thing I think Diablo 3 did worse than Diablo 2. Diablo 2, you put your, you know, you level up, you put your skill point in whatever skill you want to boost. You know, Necromancer, you want your bone spear to be stronger, you keep putting skill points in it. Diablo 3, it's, you found it. Why is this one green? Stage 2, clean sweep. Reprogram the sound system. Um, you know, in Diablo 2, you could find items that's like, hey, as long as this is equipped or if it's a, uh, talisman you could have it in your inventory It'd be like you get plus two to your bone spear as long as you got this equipped that's cool or the really rare ones where it's like you're not even playing a necromancer and it's like yeah equip this and you get plus two bone spear and suddenly you can fire a spell that's not even for your class but diablo 3 went more with making loot too important for scaling where instead of that it's like so you wear this ring and your bone spear does 1000 percent damage and it forces so much onto the items instead of the player and their skill points. And it just, yeah. to me, it threw the balance off in a way that I wasn't super fond of. Still a fun game. Still played far more of it than I should. But I do think that that was something Diablo 2 did better. I like the player, the character stats to be tied to the character and their skills, not 
rely solely on the items and equipment to do the heavy lifting. Uh, it's, it's striking a balance there and finding a way to do it without one or the other being too... What are you doing? Too much of a problem. Okay. I don't understand what I just... Why, am I just making a public menace of myself? I just seem to be going around the city destroying stuff. Well, that was some music. Also, a big droid that is completely ignoring my existence. Okay, camera. I have a projectile and you're not letting me use it in fights? I call shenanigans. Oh, so many shenanigans. Might have been nice to... No, I'm trying to click that. Might have been nice to know about this quest before I, you know, ransacked this whole area. Let's see if we can find... Y'all are weird. People are starting to respawn. That might be one. Probably not. There's one. There's two. Got them. All right. Oh my goodness. You're sending me back in. I just left there. Please. Don't shoot me, I'm friendly. Hi, repair droid. See, I'm friendly. I didn't... He squeaked at me. Spaceport code. Y'all be blinded while I figure out what I'm trying to do here. Is it down there at one of the computers? Is it up here? Probably up here. It's not at the computer? Huh. Oh no, this is going to end terribly. Kira, we've made terrible calls of judgment. You fight that guy and keep him distracted while I deal with these. Not gonna make it. Uh, I think he dropped the thing we're looking for. Well, that works. Uh, the timer keeps going up and it's aggravating. Whatever, I'm taking a nap. Anyway, we got what we came for. My ability to care has been uh, pretty well drained at this moment, so. And it's not letting me ride in the car, so we're just going to walk. So we're just going to walk. Go ahead, I'll just hit the respawn button. Okay, we're back. That was a pointless endeavor and a waste of my time. Yo. It's over. Sobrik is free. I didn't think I'd live to see it. Of course, all the talk is about a Balmoran hero turned Imperial. We look like idiots. There'll be desertions. 
Colonel Merrick's rotting away in a secure storage room. Once the Empire's gone, he'll get a proper jail cell. Oh yeah, I forgot I was supposed to slice something in there. Eh, I don't care. Sobrick's free. I my word. Winning Sobrick didn't go exactly as planned. But with the city free, people will know it's only a matter of time before they're free too. Commander Maydeen wants to speak with you. We've got him waiting on comm call. Alright, uh, why? Did the commander say what it was about? He didn't say, and I didn't pry. Balmora will never forget what you did for us. Thank you again. Hmm. <sighs> I'm going to go do it, but I'm never going to forget how much of a time waster this stupid spaceport was. Because it's literally pointless if I did all but one of the pieces, because I don't think I get the experience unless I complete the bonus objective. So, back we go. Assuming I can remember how to get there, I think it's up here. If I had done the bonus objective in order, it probably wouldn't have been a problem, but the bonus objective didn't show up until Kira defeated somebody, which didn't happen until we were leaving. Okay, that does drop you out of the car, so it's pointless to use the thing to speed the car back up. Come on, game. Move, move, move. I'm not in combat. There's nothing within 100 meters of me. As you can tell, I am getting slightly impatient with this area. See how far we can make it before they inevitably throw a uh, stun ball at me. I feel so fast, I've got a glowy trail. And there's the person with the stun ball. Stay down. I don't know what I achieved, but I... I guess I just click this. Oh my goodness, you idiots! Stop fighting me, I'm trying to click things. Not even a threat, you're a nuisance. Here, I finish him off. Thank you. Because this one does a cutscene, huh? And it doesn't do a cutscene. Who's Tyrus? Oh, hi. Hi, man. No cryo grenades for you. Oh, you get to be on fire while I'm frozen, so... There you go. So much time waste went into this. I'm not fighting anybody. Thank you. I just want out of this city. Leave me alone, all of you. You think y'all be glad to see me leave? Oh, 
I really do feel sometimes like too many enemies in this game have just stuns and knockbacks and things that knock me off my mount. In combat, it's fine, and it can be interactive to where you have to deal with enemies having some certain, like, moves that you've got to counter. When you're just trying to get somewhere, though, due to the nature of an MMO and endlessly respawning enemies, I just want to get somewhere. I'm not interested in fighting, y'all. And that does make it slightly more tedious. Whereas in KOTOR, I would either have to fight the enemies, or they, of course, wouldn't respawn endlessly while I'm in the area. If I leave and they respawn when I come back, that's fine. But if they, you know, respawn on a set timer, then it becomes a little more of a problem, and it's generally something that comes up more in MMOs. You tend to notice it more in MMOs. Because it wouldn't be fair for the other players if the enemies didn't respawn until I left. And it wouldn't be fair to me if they didn't respawn until they left. What if it doesn't respawn until everyone in the area leaves? Well, that's not going to happen. Somebody's going to hang around. And that's basically the problem you see with the, uh, the rare elite enemies and stuff like World of Warcraft, or at least back in the day, where it's like, Oh yeah, this one spawns every 36 hours, and there'll just be a horde of people waiting to kill it the moment that it spawns. Yay. I leveled up. Whoa, I got things. Um, endure. Alright, that's cool. Force push. Immediate, <laughs> immediately finishes the cooldown of four sleep. You push me, I push you, I jump back to you. Dispatch. I mean, that's an execute. Only usable on targets below. Yeah, I mean, still, now I've just got to figure out, oh my goodness which buttons to put you on, which is become going to become a problem. Okay, some of these I can drop off of here, like... Yeah, I guess I could keep strike, because it generates focus. That's level one, and I almost never really get to use it. Overhead slash, I rarely get to use. Dispatch can go there. I guess I'll stick that there. I'm going to swap those because I don't end up using the stasis very much. Interesting. I've got more moves. Uh, who am I supposed to talk to? This thing? Yo, big thing! Talk to me! Commander Maydeen, I was told you wanted to speak with me. Okay. Solberg is free, and we have you to thank. A battalion should be in the city soon, though it'll be a long slog. You've proven your commitment to Balmor and the Republic. Oh, no. I've been authorized to ask for your help with a top secret mission. Alright. We've already invaded Imperial territory and liberated Sobrik. What's left? The Republic didn't even know this objective existed until the Empire forced us off world. The Balmorans hit it well. Let me introduce Dr. Karsiri, a scientist at the Balmoran Arms Factory. The lead scientist now, actually. Not that that matters. I don't lead armies or free cities like you. Dr. Karsiri is braver than he admits. He's working on the whole reason the Empire's fighting for Balmora. The Barrage or Planetary Defense System. Oof. I think I just saw the entirety of Transformers Prime flash before my eyes. That's a familiar voice. That's an impressive name. Also, it looks like Barrager and not Barrager. I mean, it's spelled correctly, just the way that my mind saw the subtitle before he said it. What's so special about this weapon? Oh my goodness. The Barrager can destroy an entire orbiting fleet without launching a <laughs> single ship. The host planet becomes an impenetrable fortress. We can't do anything to the Barrager unless we can control it. For that, we need someone who knows the weapon inside and out. The weapon's designers are Dr. Meln and Dr. Ortis. 
They refused to work for the Empire and were imprisoned in the Gorinth Brig. I can't not see you as a, a shiny red car now. Anyway, moving on with life. Uh, I've not heard of that place. What exactly is the Gorinth Brig? It's a brutal Imperial prison. Every scientist who refused to cooperate was sent there. Dr. Meln and Dr. Ordis are the only people who can get us the Barrager. They must get out of the Gorinth Brig safely. My scout Wes Durga is on the Gorinth Plateau. Speak with him. He'll know how to get inside and free the doctors. All right. I'll get there as soon as possible. Keep me updated, Commander. I'll do what I can to keep the Empire busy here. Good luck. I got a thing. Hooray! And now, if I remember how to do this... No, not you. Go do a thing. Go do a thing. You go do a thing, too. Your peace of mind is my highest priority. Rest assured, this will be done to perfection. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and pause here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.